is Megatron TV, and I'm back with another series of Being on the Run, Part 1. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Share this wherever you can. I definitely appreciate the small amount of support that I have received. Um, I'm actually talking to um, P from Count Time. Um, hopefully going to do an interview with him sometime soon. Um, P, if you're watching this, I definitely appreciate it, man. But, um, so yeah, here is my story. So, um, like I said, this is going to be a series because I have several different stories throughout my life. I'm actually going to start at the, um, not the most recent time that I was on the run, but the time before that, um, I'll give you a little backstory. It's actually for the charges I'm on probation for now. In North Carolina, or at least in the counties surrounding me, Catawba, Burke, Caldwell, I know they do it here. <clears throat> If you get a drug charge um, and you can't make bond, now this was 2015, um, I had um, possession and possession in the jail, um, two felonies. Um, so you, uh, you get your first appearance and then in 21 days you get what they call probable cause hearing. Now, um, the majority of the time for drug charges and nonviolent offenses, for some reason, they drop the charges. They show no cause, and they drop the charges, okay? But you're not free and clear. Basically, what they're doing is they are not using any evidence in district court to have it bound over the superior court, unless they have overwhelming evidence or it's a violent offense or something. I still don't understand why they do it, but they do it for everybody, um, or the majority of the people, um, get out after the probable cause hearing, um, and then the next time they have a grand jury, they take your case in front of a grand jury and issue an indictment, which actually winds up being worse, because they double your bond whenever they finally, ca if they catch you, um, and you don't turn yourself in. So, um, that's why if you make bond and you're out and you go to your probable cause hearing, your lawyer will waive probable cause because if they make them show cause, then they're just going to dismiss it and then they're going to have a grand jury hearing that you don't know about, your lawyer won't know about, you won't have any, any representatives there. They'll just be talking about your case in front of a grand jury and then the grand jury will either choose to indict you or not indict you. So that's how that works. So, um, in 2015, I got arrested for these charges. Uh, it actually took two probable cause hearings. The first one uh, got uh, continued. And, um, like, 50-something days in, they finally dismissed the felonies, which I was still in there for a bunch of misdemeanors. Um, but also, in Catawba County, they had this thing called um, repay. If you're just in there on misdemeanors, they won't make you wait until your set court date if you file repay paperwork. They come and see you on the little visitation kiosk, ask you a bunch of questions, they go ahead and assign you an attorney, and within a week you'll have a paper slid under your door with a new court date, which will be very soon. And that's what happened with me. I had so much time build up, but then I had like 80-something days, um, they... You know, I went in there and they, they uh, got me time served on my little misdemeanors. <clears throat> so I got out. This is 2015. That's the backstory <clears throat> on it. So um, going ahead, maybe two years. Um, I always knew in the back of my mind that I probably I was going to have an indictment eventually. Um, but something that nobody obviously on here knows about me that um, I've never talked about is I have a kidney disease which makes me get kidney stones all the time I take medication for it called cystinuria um, it's a hell of a genetic disorder but um so I went to the hospital one day um, for a kidney stone apparently the the area that I was working in is called Longview, North Carolina. It's still in Catawba County, but it's got its own police department. 
they had found out that I had an indictment and they had come to my work looking for me. The same time I went to go to the hospital for a kidney stone, I left work early. So um, my work tells them that um, I went to the hospital. So they call Hickory Police because I was now going in the Hickory District, also in Catawba County. Um, I was going to went to the I went to the hospital, and I'm sitting there in terrible pain. My, my washer's about to take off, flying out. Uh, it's about to blast off. Anyways, um, so I'm in the waiting room with a kidney stone. I'm all like this. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm throwing up. They've got that little throw up bag and everything. And I'm just puking. And I'm just miserable. And you know, you see cops in the emergency room all the time. A Hickory City cop comes walking up to me, says my name. He's like, stand up. He's like, uh, I've got a warrant for your arrest. Makes me go outside, puts me in handcuffs. But I had already checked in, so they had to let me get seen. So we go into a little waiting room in the waiting room, uh, like a it was like an office or something. And luckily for me, I think the hospital had thought that I had they had arrested me and I left. So they took me off the waiting list. He's like, we're just going to wait here um, and get you seen and I'm taking you to jail. So we waited there for like an hour and a half. He gets tired of waiting. So he's texting his lieutenant. His lieutenant gives him the green light to let me go. And um, he said they were going to have somebody there waiting on me to arrest me. Um, so... I go, I get seen by the doctor real quick, and I go walking out, waiting on, expecting there to be a cop there waiting on me. And there were cops there, but they weren't waiting on me. I just walked right out. At the time I was riding the moped, a scooter, jumped on my scooter, and headed home. So I lived in this little apartment, um, that's in like, it's like a, a huge house made into apartments. Um... And my apartment was on the side. So I pulled in. I got a little ramp that went up my stairs. Run my scooter inside. I never kept it inside. But I put it inside. Covered all the windows up. And was you know just started thinking about what I was going to do. And um, I got paid the next day. This was like on Wednesday or Thursday. The very next day I was getting paid. So I was calling bondsmen. Um, to go up there and turn myself in. Um, so, I, I was just sitting there, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to go out, I didn't want to make any noise, I didn't want to make any sign of life in that apartment. So I'm laying there, um, still feeling miserable from the kidney stone, um, and all of a sudden, you know, I hear, and to this day, knocking on doors, um, I think it's, like, it's considered PTSD, even though it's from just, you know, breaking, you know, being on the run and doing stuff that you knew that the police, if they came there, it would be bad. So, knocking on doors, loud knocking, any, any, unexpected, any unexpected knocking on my door, you can almost guarantee that I'm not even going to get up and move. Even if I'm doing absolutely nothing wrong, it just sends me back into that, that you know, that, that mind frame. So I just sit there and make absolutely no noise while the knocking continues and continues. And it was loud, man. They were going all around beating on my windows. You know, they go like, I don't know if they would leave or if they would just stand there for like 15 minutes. And I'd be like, okay, maybe they're gone. And then they would do it again. They would knock. So... They, this went on for about two or three hours. You know, and I'm just like, oh my god. Um, I think they had a feeling that I was there, but they weren't sure. Um, so, what ha What the tactic that they tried, and I'm too smart for this, they had, um, I had went to a, a local grocery store, I'm not going to say the name on here. Um, it was like a small mom and pop grocery store, probably two weeks before that. And, um, had gotten into it with the manager over something stupid. You know, I was taking Xanaxes, and I went up there, I was talking, trying to talk to one of their cashiers. They, they had no, nothing was going on, they weren't busy. But he told me if I wasn't going to buy nothing, I needed to leave. 
and me and him got to arguing, and I'm pretty sure that's what got Longview the Police Department on me, because he probably got my scooter tag and called him and stuff, and that's probably how they found out that I had the indictment. Um, so what they did was they had um, the manager of that grocery store that I had gotten into it um, call me. And he's like, hey, man, you know, I feel bad about what happened the other day. He's like, I, I really owe you an apology. He's like, I've actually got a gift card here for you um, if you can come get it. And, like, as soon as he says that, you know, I know exactly what time it is. Um, and I told him, I said, man, I'm in Lenore right now. I've got to go turn myself in on um, some charges that I'm facing, like, like trying to let him know that, Trying to put the word out there, but not let them know that I'm on that I'm on on beat with what they're doing. Um, I was like, but I'll come get it tomorrow or something. I'm like, I'm just not even in the county right now. He's like, alright. And it wasn't. They did not knock on my door at all that that day. Um, the rest of that night. So fast forward the next morning. Um, I'm I gotta go meet a bondsman in uh. At Hickory Police Department, um, but I had to also go to the methadone clinic and get my methadone dose because it was Friday and I was getting take homes, and I couldn't miss that Friday. So I'm I'm dipping out, you know, trying to be all elusive and stuff, and um, I get down there to the bus stop because I'm not riding my scooter out down there. You know, I'm just like I walk down to the bus stop and I'm sitting there, and it's probably it's still dark out it's like it's almost it's the first time that the bus runs so it's like almost six o'clock in the morning and i'm sitting there waiting on the bus and i see longview go by and he rides by real slow rides by real slow and stops like probably maybe 20 30 feet past the bus stop he stops and i just grab i have a lock box in a bag for my take homes I grabbed that bitch and I ran for my life. I took off running. Like I said, it was still dark. Um, there was a cut through that would cut through the backyards of um, of some houses that were between the bus stop and my apartment. Um, and I dipped all the way back there. I don't know if he was stopping for me or what because I don't think he ever got out and chased me. Um, but basically what I had to do then was I had to go all the way back up the main highway and try to catch uh, the bus up there. So I get up there, that bus stop, and I'm already fucking shook as hell. Um, just if I if I saw any headlights, you know, it was starting to become daylight, so I could actually see the cars then. Um, and then I seen the bus. I was like, thank you God, I jumped on that bus. Rode it around, rode up to the methadone clinic. Man, I had to kill like six hours, dude. And, um, you know, finally I got up there um, to the police department when the bondsman met me up there. And, you know, I got really lucky because um, my bond, when I was first arrested on this, was $20,000. <clears> it was 10000 for the possession and 10000 for the possession of a controlled substance in the jail. So they hit me with like the highest bond they're killing that. Um, and everybody I've known have, would have, they double your bond if you're arrested and brought back. Um, but I went to the magistrate at the police department with a bondsman and got really lucky. Um, the magistrate only gave me a $1,000 bond. And even the bondsman couldn't believe it. He's like, man, he just blessed you. And, um, you know, that just knowing that I had those indictments and warrants off um, was just like so worth it. So worth, you know, the run and stuff. It was actually worth it to run and get away. Like it, you know, it usually is, but you know, there's there's always going to be an end. Um, but the end game this time, you know, me doing the right thing and turning myself in, you know, it pays off, man. Um, you know, that that doesn't take too much common sense to realize that that you know they're gonna respect you if you're turning yourself in but anyways y'all um i've got a bunch of other stories a lot more um longer in-depth stories of being on the run you know i was on the run for like 
six months whenever I was um when I was 18 I had a bunch of I had racked up a bunch of charges and that's what part two will be about I had racked, racked up a bunch of um uh, attempted and obtained controlled substance by forgery and fraud um, I had racked up a bunch of those and was running on a probation violation, all kinds of other stuff. Um, you know, and there was several times they came close to catching me. But a little teaser, a little uh, spoiler alert for the next one. Um, they got me on my birthday at a family member's house. They snuck me. They set me up. Y'all stay tuned for part two. It'll be sometime this weekend, hopefully. Till then, y'all, Microtron TV over and out.